Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie Colours. Thank you for joining me today. I am back with part two of my entire colouring book collection. And I'm gonna to start today with my Kanoko Agusa books. I just adore these books. Um, I have only recently got um, this one and the Kingdom of Curious Creatures book. So I don't have anything coloured in this one just yet. I only just got these around about Christmas time. I treated myself to these two books. Um, I do absolutely adore Kanoko Agusa's artwork. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um, sometimes a little bit scary <laughs> to tackle. Like, I think this page, this doubles page spread is absolutely gorgeous. Um, but yeah, kind of scary to tackle. But yeah, I would like to do that one one day. Um, but I haven't done anything in this book as of yet. So that's Garden of Fairy Tale Animals. Next up, I have Kingdom of Curious Creatures, and I do have one finished page in here, which is a page that I did for Christmas time. If I can find it now, I'll put it further back. Um, so yeah, as I say, I got these books just before Christmas. I kind of treated myself to an early Christmas present, and yeah, here's the one that I did. So I decided to do this kind of Christmas wreath page, and I um, was really happy with how it turned out. So I used... Um, Polychromo, no, Prismacolor pencils um, for all the pencil work and then added, as you can see, the shine, some sparkle pop pen in both silver and gold inside the little flowers. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much all I used, but I was really happy with how that turned out. I apologize for the lighting today. I'm doing this quite early in the morning, so it's still relatively dark, um, so I have to use a lamp to help me. <laughs> But yeah, that's all I've done in this book. But um, again, beautiful images. I absolutely adore Kanoko Goose's artwork and I can't wait to do more in her books um, in the coming months. So that's Kingdom of Curious Creatures by Kanoko Agusa. And the final one, which is the one that I've had longest, is Symphony of Cute Animals. And I have done a couple in here. Um... I've obviously marked that. Oh, I think I wanted to do that one because I think it's absolutely adorable. Uh, I haven't got around to doing it yet. Um, yeah, I've done this one, which was a buddy colour with Dana's Colouring Obsession, I want to say. Um, but yeah, I did this one with some... Um, I used water-based markers, but I used them as a watercolour to base um, like everything. And then I went over with my pencils. I can't remember which pencils I used. They might've been Arteza pencils. And hopefully you can see some sparkle there. I did add some um, glitter kind of um, Spectrum Noir glitter pen over the top to add some sparkle and shine. And I used my Sparkle Pop pen on the silver bits here. And I used a metallic watercolor on the copper, pe copper kettle. <laughs> speak um, as well and I did a little bit of white gel pen outlining the glass bottles and things um, but yeah I was pretty happy with how that one turned out I really liked it it was a lot of fun to color so there was that one and then I did I think only one other which was this one which was my very first Kanoko Igusa page so with this one, I used my Albrecht Dura watercolor pencils, which I activated and then went over dry with um, just the dry pencils. Um, I used some metallic watercolor for the jug. Um, but yeah, I was pretty happy with how this one turned out as well. I kind of enjoyed this one. Didn't know what to do with the background, so just went quite subtle and soft. But yeah, really pretty page. Really happy with how that one turned out. So that is all that I have done in these beautiful books, but definitely want to do more in these because I just think they're absolutely stunning images. Um, beautiful, beautiful artwork. Yeah, really like this artist. So that's Symphony of Cute Animals by Kanoko Agusa. Okay, next up I have my Mel Pimini Chatsupanagitu books and I will start with Enchanted Earth because I haven't done anything in this book. I'm ashamed to say, I really do need to rectify that because it's a beautiful book. Um, but yeah, I haven't started anything in this one. Um, it is single-sided as well, so you could use alcohol markers if you so wished. Um, I love um, Malcolmini's artwork. Um, it is really beautiful. It can look a little bit intimidating because she does a lot of um, 
She does a lot of line work and, and details, but actually once you start coloring, you find that, that it's, it's definitely not as intimidating as it can sometimes first appear. Um, but yeah, there are several pages in this book I would like to, I've marked quite a few, obviously. I don't know what I've marked. Um, okay, so I think this was like my autumn, autumn pages that I had marked. So there was that one, uh, this one with the leaf. What have I got there? The pumpkin. <laughs> yeah, all very autumnal pages. And then this one, which is not that autumnal. Um, and this is one that I would quite like to do because I think it's a really lovely page with the snail. I really like the way she's drawn that. It's really lovely. Um, but a beautiful book, but haven't done anything in it yet. So I really do need to try and tackle that one soon. That's Enchanted Earth by Malcolm Annie Chats Panagitu. Then I have a Circle of Life, which I have just done two pages in. Yeah, I just wanted to check. So I have done two pages in this one. So Circle of Life by Malcolm Annie Chats Panagitu. So the first page I have done was this um, tortoise page or turtle tortoise I think he's a tortoise um and I did this with a color palette um so I used I think it was a Sarah Renee Clark color palette that I used and um I used my Prismacolor Premier pencils for everything including the background which isn't brilliant it's not perfectly blended or anything um but um I did this kind of earlier on last year um, but overall pretty happy with how it turned out. I think it, it looks pretty good. Um, I do like the colours that I used. It's a bit different. Um, so I've done that one. And then the only other one is a bit of a sneak peek of a um, page that I did for January. So I will show that when I do my January coloured pages. But again, I absolutely love this book. Absolutely beautiful images. Um, obviously, it's called Circle of Life, so most of the designs are circular, although you do have a few like that um, double page spread there, where did it go, which are not, but most of them are kind of like circular designs, um, and I kind of like that because for someone like me who's a bit petrified of doing backgrounds, it makes life a little bit easier because you've just got kind of a smaller enclosed space to deal with rather than... Um, a huge open area <laughs> so I do like that about Malcolm Minnie's books um but yeah this is this is a lovely book so that is Circle of Life and then the final Malcolm Minnie book is Nature's Mandalas uh, or Nature Mandalas and I've done a few in this book um this was the one that I was kind of least interested in buying initially um, but I'm really glad I did because I actually really like it. Um, it's got some lovely pages in it. Um, again, they're single sided. So if you so wish, you could use alcohol markers. And again, they look quite intimidating. There is quite a lot of detail on the page like this. But again, Melpomeni's art style is lots of lots of lines and lots of dots and lots of detail so it can look like there's more there than there actually is once you start getting into it um it's like this like the water is just covered with lines whereas other artists might just draw an outline of the water she's like added all the detail in so it can look a little bit intimidating but i think once you get started with her it's actually really lovely <laughs> um so this is, yep, yeah, this is the one of the pages that I did. I believe I did this with, um, I want to say Sergeant Arts pencils. And I think that's all I used. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else in there. It is just pencil. So that was the cactus page. So I did that one. I also did this one. Um, so I did this, I was on holiday in Bali and... Um, I believe it was Elm Colors. Erica from Elm Colors had a Color Asia hashtag. And um, I decided to do this one because it is kind of lots of Asian inspired animals. And I tried to color them like um, some of the animals that were kind of native to Bali. I'm not sure that I got it exactly right, but there was this kind of like rainbow bug thing. Um, which looked really cool and we actually saw quite a few of these these are like um they were like big pigeons or like guinea fowl type thing 
Um, so I tried to color them similar to the animals that were in Bali. Obviously there's no red pandas in Bali, um, but yeah, I wanted to do it kind of as a reminder of my holiday. So I did that one again. I think I used Sargent Arts pencils because those were what I took on holiday with me, as well as a little bit of um, clear Jelly Roll Stardust to add the sparkle. I think that's all I use and a bit of white gel pen um, on that one. And then I do have one more in this book, which I think is right at the very front. Um, but yeah, I do, do love this book. I do love the images in it. Um, as I say, they can kind of look a little bit intimidating, but when you get started, they're fine. And this was the very first one that I did in this, in this book, which was the feathers page. And again, I did this when I was on holiday. So it was Sergeant Arts pencils with some orange sparkle pop pen and a little bit of pink sparkle pop pen in various places as well. Um, I didn't do any background or anything on this one, just left it as is, and I really like how that one turned out. So that is it for my Nature Mandalas book by Malpomeni Chatsapanagitu. That is all of my Malpomeni books. So I'll move on to my mythographic books. Um, I have, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, I have seven, seven mythographic books. And I did kind of try and get at least one page done in all of them. I'm not sure that I succeeded. I think there might be one without a page that I did. But this one is Mythographic Dream Garden by Fabiana Atanasio, Fabiana Atanasio. Um, and this is one that does have, as you can see, a ton of, um, in images. This was a page that I'm really keen to do. I really love this page and I actually printed off an inspiration sheet. I don't know what I've got on here. It was quite some time ago. Oh yeah, I remembered I wanted to go kind of kind of like use this kind of colour scheme for the sky um, and do something similar to that on the sky. Um, but I never got around to actually doing it, but I do love that page. I think it's beautiful. In fact, most of the pages in all of these books are absolutely wonderful. Some of them are quite detailed. Others are a little bit more easier. Or I wouldn't say easier, but uh, again, this is another one that I really wanted to do. And again, it printed off an inspiration sheet. So obviously wanted to go quite autumnal with that page. Um, where have I done anything in this? I think I've done one. Have I done one? I can't remember. I do like that one as well. Um, I've clearly gone through and marked lots of pages and printed off inspirations for lots of pages. So mm, toadstool pages. Uh, I really like that one too. In fact, I think this is one of my favourite mythographic books. I really like this one. Um, oh, yeah, I have done one. So I did this one. Oh, thankfully I did one. <laughs> so I did this, I can't remember what I used. I think I used my ink tense pencils for the background. I think I based everything with um, water, cut, water brush pens, water based markers. Um, I can't remember what pencils I used on top. Um, honestly, can't remember what I used for that. Um, and then I've, I've used a gold gel pen to, I've, I've just colored all of the hidden objects in gold, which is similar to what they do on the front covers where they cover color everything in gold. So that's what I've done with that. And also to outline the little window frames and things and add some um, stars and things in the background. And then I used white and pink Posca pen to add little dots to like my kind of foliage I don't know if it's foliage or like ground area I suppose um but yeah I was quite happy with how that one turned out honestly can't remember what pencils I used um I'll have to go back and have a look at the completed pages video um but yeah that is one page at least that I have done in this book and again they are beautiful and I would like to come back and do more um yeah, just too many colouring books and not enough time. <laughs> I saw somebody had done, I think it was this page. It was a salamander page anyway, and I really liked it. Um, yeah, lots of ones. That's one of my, definitely one of my favourite mythographic books, Myth Mythographic Dream Garden 
by Fabiana Atanasio. Okay, next up I have Magical Earth. Again, this is one of my very favourite books. Absolutely adore this one. Haven't done much in it. I think I've only done one page in here. This is by Joseph Katambang, um, who is definitely one of my favourite mythographic artists. Um, I saw Erica from Elm Colours had done this page absolutely beautifully uh, last year, I think it was, um, in autumn. Um, and it was absolutely beautiful. But yeah, I absolutely adore this book. It is definitely one of my favourites. Every time I flick through it, I just get really inspired. Um, <laughs> and never colour anything in it, which is stupid. I really need to start. But yeah, I look through it and I'm like, oh, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Um, I believe that Karen from My Colourful Country Life has a colour along for this page, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, I love this one. Um, I love all the pages in this book. I don't, I honestly don't think there's one page that I wouldn't feel inclined to colour because they are all beautiful. Um, but I think I have only one page, which I did when I very first got the book and really didn't like the way it turned out. And, um, oh, I didn't do anything. It wasn't this book. I'm dreaming. So I haven't done anything in this one. Oh my goodness. Okay. Definitely need to do something in here. Right. So it wasn't that book. It must have been one of the other ones. Okay. So that's Magical Earth by Joseph Katzenbang. Another uncolored book. I've got so many. I really, really need to do something about that. Okay, Enchanted Castles by Fabiana Atanasio. Um, so you'll see a pattern. My two favourite mythographic artists are Fabiana and Joseph Katzenbang. Um, I love their artwork. This one, I have to admit, is not my favourite. There, It is a lot busier. I mean, look at that. It's tiny, tiny details. Um, so lots of busy little details in this book. Um, so definitely not my favourite. Would have been a good one for winter. Um, but there are pages in it that I really love. So yeah, I don't love all of them, but I do love some of them. So it was kind of like, oh, you know, <laughs> worth adding to my collection. Um, I don't know when I'm ever going to get a chance to colour all of these amazing pages. Um, I'm sure I've done one in here. It's obviously one that I've marked. I really like this page, this little tree person with all the little fairies. But again, lots of little details and I had printed off kind of like a colour palette inspiration for that one. Um, I'm sure I've done one. Have I? Maybe I haven't. Don't tell me this is another uncoloured book. I'll be horrified. Oh, I'm sure I've done one in here. I guess not. Goodness. Okay, so I've still got two uncolored mythographic books that I need to get to. That's really bad, isn't it? Okay, so I've got nothing colored in that one. So that was Mythographic Enchanted Castles by Fabiana Atanasio. I'm sure I've got colored pages and all the rest of them. <laughs> I'm sure I have. So this is Mythographic Voyage, again by Joseph Katambang. Um Again, it's another lovely one. Um, I really like this page. Had that one marked for ages. Um, just, yeah, really like this one. It's a little bit more open and you don't have all the silly hidden objects, which I really like and appreciate because I really don't like all the hidden objects that they put in their books. Um, kind of drive me a little bit crazy. I think this might be the page that I was thinking of from the last book, um, right at the very front, I think. Right at the very start, the very first page is the one that I've done. Yeah, this one. Um, don't really like how it turned out. I did it quite early on in my coloring journey last year. Um, I used alcohol markers, as you can see, as a base for everything. Then went over with my pencils. I can't remember which pencils I used. Um, I honestly can't remember. Used a little bit of um, a sparkly gel pen for my um, dandelions there. Um, I was going with a colour palette. I think what lets it down most of all is the background, which I did, just did with alcohol marker. But I probably should have gone over with something else to try and smooth it out. 
and add a little bit of interest and contrast, maybe some clouds or something to make it a little bit more interesting. On the whole, it's not too bad, but yeah, just not my favorite page, but I do love this book. So that's Mythographic Voyage by Joseph Kattenbang. Next up, I have Mythographic Imagine, again, by Joseph Kattenbang. This is one that has hundreds of little hidden objects. So again, really not one of my favorites. Um, but again, there are pages that I do really like and other pages that I'm not so fussed on. Um, so yeah, definitely not my favorite of the mythographic books, but again, there are some really lovely pages in this book. Um, I've seen this one done a few times and I really like it, although it looks a bit busy when I look at it like that, but, um, yeah, I've seen a few pages done. So this is a page that I did. I think I did this for Mermaid last year um, and I used water-based markers. Did I use water-based markers? I thought I used water-based markers. Maybe I used alcohol markers for the background um, but on the whole I based everything with water-based markers and then went over with my pencils. Can't remember which pencils I used um, and it added some white gel pen. I remember being really disappointed with how my bubbles turned out. Really could not get them looking the way I wanted. Um, and then I used a bit of sparkle pop pen for like the necklace and the little string on her bikini there. Um, yeah, it didn't turn out brilliantly, but it's, it's kind of fun. It's quite colorful, but yeah, it didn't quite turn out how I wanted. But not too bad. So I've done that one. I don't know if I've done any more in this book. Um, I remember starting that page and thinking, oh my gosh, there's a lot. <laughs> um, but once I got going, it was okay. And I think I find that with a lot of these kind of pages, which I think look incredibly busy. Once I get started and going on them, they're not too bad. Oh, I don't know if I've done anything else in this book. I'm not sure. At least there's one colour page. I guess that's a bonus. Yeah, I think that's it for this book. Yeah, that's all. So that's Mythographic Imagine by Joseph Kattenbang. Next up, I have Mythographic Menagerie. I think I only have one done in this. This is another one by Fabiana Atanasio. Um, so yeah, I think I only have one done in this one. I do love this page. I thought that was beautiful. In fact, I do really like this book. Um, Again, it's not quite so busy, which is always a bonus. Uh, oh, this page is beautiful. And I've seen some beautiful renditions of this one. Uh, it kind of scares me a little bit, all those crystals and things. Um, or maybe this was the page that I saw recently with the salamanders. And it turned out just gorgeous. Loved it. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of fun pages in this one and lots of really cute animals. I love this one for Halloween. I think that would be such a fun one to do for Halloween. Um, where is the page? I've done, I'm sure I've done a page in here. Maybe I haven't. Oh, I really hope I have because that'll be another. Oh yes, I have done one. I made that one. Yeah, I knew I'd done one. So this is the owl I did. Um, I think I did this one. It would have been November or October, I think. I can't remember exactly when. So I used, I used Neo Color 2s for the background, I believe. I used a, I used, yeah, alcohol marker to base all of the images and then went over with pencil. Again, I honestly can't remember which pencil I used. Um, added some Sparkle Pop pen and some um, glossy accents to the eyes and then white, paint pen to all of the little dot details in the background to add that starry sky. Pretty happy with how that one turned out. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I really like the wood. I really like how the wood turned out. I thought that was really, really good. But yeah, quite happy with that one. And again, at least it's one colored page in this book. <gasps> Feeling ashamed. I've got so many books with so many uncolored pages. Next up is Mythographic Paradise by Fabiana Atanasio. Um, and I'm thinking I have got one done in this book as well. That would be great for Chinese New Year, wouldn't it? With the dragon, given that it's um, dragon, year of the dragon this year. Um, 
yeah this one so this one i was pretty happy with how it turned out bar the hidden objects i tried to cover them up and then I couldn't get my pencil to go over them very well. So they kind of ended up standing out more than if I just kind of colored over them. <laughs> so um, I wasn't particularly happy with that. But overall, I was pretty happy with how this one turned out. I particularly liked um, the purple sky that I added, which was not good. I, initially, I was just going to do a blue sky, but I decided in the end to go with um, a purple sky. And I'm really happy with that. The fact that I chose that because it really makes this yellow on the leaves pop um, and kind of makes the other colors stand out. So that was a good choice, I think. Um, I think I used Prismacolor Premier pencils. Um, I think I based everything with water-based markers and then went over with my Prismacolors, um, used some gold um, metallic gel pen and some white paint pen as well in places. Um, yeah, so I think that is my only coloured page in this one. Again, there are some beautiful images in here. Not all of them are ones that I love, but um, a lot of really lovely ones. So that is Mythographic Paradise by Fabiana Atanasio. So I, that's all of the mythographics I have, thank goodness. Um, I do have a couple of Hannah Carlson books, which I will show you. Again, I haven't done much in these. I have ordered um, a bunch of Hannah Carlson books because I really like them. Um, can you get all of that in there? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so I do love her artwork. I love the books because the paper quality is really, really good. Um, but I haven't done much in them. So um, I have just, and I have just gone and ordered. <laughs> what have I ordered? I've ordered um, Seasons. I've ordered Tales from the Witch's Cottage and Tales from the Forest Kingdom. I think that's the only ones I've ordered. Um, but I really, really love her books and her artwork. Um, and yeah, would like to do more in here. Um, but again, I think I've only done one. Oh, I do like that page. That's really pretty. Um, which is right at the very start. And this was one that I kind of just jumped in and decided that I would try to do and see how it turned out. And I used a bunch of stuff that I um, was kind of experimenting with. So I used Crayola markers to base everything. So you can see that it didn't come out very smooth on her face, which I'm a bit disappointed about. Um, I used Crayola markers and then I went over with, I want to say my Polychromos pencils um, over her hair and her face. Again, I'm not very good at skin and hair, so it's something I need to work on. I do like the color choices. And then I had these metallic um, kind of paints um, that I wanted to try out. I couldn't, didn't really know what they looked like, so I just decided to experiment with those on the butterfly. Um, I do kind of like the color choices, but the actual coloring is a little bit, it's not great. But it was a fun little page. So that is my only page in Summer Nights by Hannah Carlson. And then I have Daydreams by Hannah Carlson. Again, I think I've only done one page in here. Um, but again, lots of pages that I would love to do. Um, I would love to do all of them. And I know a lot of people are trying to finish this book. Um, it is absolutely beautiful artwork. Really love it. Not so keen on this kind of thing where you've got to fill in your own details. That's not really one for me because I'm not an artist. So I'm not very good at that sort of thing. But there's not too many of them. I think there's only a couple uh, in this book with that sort of um, fill in your own details. Um, but yeah, some, some absolutely stunning pages in here. So this is the only one that I have done. Um, I think this was a bit of an experiment with my, when I very first got my Neo Color 2s, I wanted to try them out on a page and see how they worked and um, kind of did a bit of an experiment. So I, I just chose this page because it seemed like <laughs> like it was a good open, fairly open one. 
um, to try out some different colours and see how they worked. So um, I did go over with a little bit of pencil, but not, not a huge amount. I didn't add much pencil detail. I tried to keep it mostly with just the Neo colours. Um, and then obviously some gold gel pen around my um, dragonfly's wings and then the centres of my flowers. Um, but yeah, that's the only page I've done in this one. Uh, not my favourite page, but definitely not the worst. Um, but yeah, absolutely beautiful book. And I can't wait to go back and do some more. Really, really need to do more in all of these books that I've shown you today. So that was Daydreams by Hannah Carlson. Okay, I am back with the next pile of books. And these are all the Creative Haven books. Um, I don't have very much coloured in these at all. In fact, many of them are actually blank. Um, yeah, shame to say. But I did get most of these just last month. So the first one is The Enchanted Colouring Book by Marjorie Sarnett. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about Marjorie Sarnett's artwork. I think it's beautiful, but um, it's got a lot of kind of zen doodly kind of qualities to it. Um, so I'm kind of a little bit on the fence about it, but I do, I mean, some of the pages I absolutely love. Um, so I do, but I would like to do a couple of pages in this book. Um, not all of them are for me. I'm not really like, like this one. I think it's gorgeous and I think it would look lovely colored, but I don't really see myself coloring it. Um, I don't know. The mermaid's lovely. I would definitely do that one. Um, even this one is beautiful. Um, but yeah, there are some that don't appeal quite so much. Um, but yeah, I can get these coloring, I do like this one, I think this is gorgeous. I can get these coloring books really reasonably priced, which is unusual over here. And I love this little one with the gnomes. Um, so it's kind of hard to turn them down, especially if you're addicted to buying coloring books. So that one is Enchanted by Marjorie Sarnett. The next Creative Haven one I have is Wondrous Wildlife, again by Marjorie Sarnett. And again, uh, I don't love all of the pictures in this book, but I do really like some of them. Um, again, you know, it's just, I don't know. I think once I added colour to everything, I think it would look great. But the kind of zen doodly bits and pieces, I'm just not a huge fan. Like this one, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of that kind of style. Um, but yeah, having said that, I think probably... I imagine once you add colour to these, they would look absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, like I say, a bit on the fence with it. Um, I absolutely love this page. It's my favourite page in the book. Um, I don't know why. I just really like that one. Um, but again, I have done nothing in this book. So, yeah, it's uncoloured at the moment. So that's Wondrous Wildlife by Marjorie Sarnett. Next up, I have two Christmas books, which I didn't colour this Christmas, I'm ashamed to say. Um, and I was really looking forward to this one, Creative Haven Christmas Gnomes by Teresa Goodridge. I love Teresa Goodridge's gnome books, um, but I just didn't get around to doing this one at Christmas time. And um, yeah, I mean, it's really only a month, isn't it, of December when you actually sit down and do Christmas colouring. Um, I guess I could try and do some of these as winter pages um but yeah really really cute little book i love this one but just uncolored so that's christmas gnomes and i have another christmas one which is also uncolored i had great intentions to do stuff but i didn't get much done over december so this one is enchanted christmas also by Teresa goodridge and again i just love the pages in this book i think they're absolutely beautiful um i was hoping to do one for um a colour along um, fairy Merry Christmas, I think it was, hosted by Elm Colours. Um, I was hoping to do this one, but I never got to it. Um, so, yeah, another uncoloured book. I'm racking them up, aren't I? <laughs> I definitely need to do more. But, yeah, that's a, a fun one, and I do really like it. So that is Enchanted Christmas Colouring Book. Next up, I have one by Marjorie Sarnett that I do really like, actually. This is Farm Sweet Farm. Um, I have started one in here, but really wasn't like liking the direction it was going in. So, um, hid it away. 
hopefully I'll get back to it again. But I think this one is really, really cute. Again, it's got kind of a bit of that zen doodly kind of look to it. But um, overall, I do really like this one. I think it's kind of cute and sweet um, and lots of cute images. Um, I like this little one. Um, but again, yeah, I started one, really didn't like the direction it was going in and I'm a bit ashamed to show it actually. It's just done with alcohol markers. So I've delayed in the base of alcohol marker and I do need to go back with my pencils. I think maybe once I add my pencils, it might be okay. But yeah, I didn't love it. So kind of just left it where it was. Um, <laughs> haven't finished it. Um, but I do like the images in this book. So I would like to go back and do some more. That's Farm Sweet Farm. Oh goodness, um, I have a lot of these that are uncolored. This one is Autumn Charm by Teresa Goodridge. Um, I kind of went on a binge of buying Teresa Goodridge's books and um, like I say, they're really, really reasonably priced, which is kind of unusual for me over here because I find a lot of things a lot more expensive than they would be if I lived in the States or the UK. I guess I have to pay shipping fees and stuff. Um, but these ones I found on Amazon UAE and they were really cheap um, and like the equivalent of a few dollars, I guess, or a few pounds. And I kind of couldn't resist getting a few of them. Um, but I haven't coloured them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's Autumn Charm by Teresa Goodridge. I then have Autumn Harvest also by Teresa Goodridge. I've also got a real thing for autumn. I love uh, um, pumpkins and um, quilts and sunflowers and um, all that good stuff um, so I really am always drawn to autumnal looking things but again didn't get anything done in this one so yep more empty books sitting on the shelves I'm afraid to say but a beautiful book Autumn Harvest by Teresa Goodridge and the final Creative Haven one I have is Gnome Sweet Gnome, also by Teresa Goodridge. And I do have a couple of pages coloured in this one, thankfully. <laughs> so they're not all completely blank. I think this one is just adorable. I know there's another Gnomes one coming out at some point, which I would probably like to get my hands on, even though I haven't coloured in any of these ones. Um, yeah, but you know, I will see. Um, where is the one I've done? I know I've done, I've done two in this book. So I did this one and um, this was a bit of an experiment because I used a Derwent, I used Ink Tense? No, I used, I can't remember what I used. I think it was Ink Tense. I used them Ink Tense to do the water um, and the sand. So pretty much all of the background was done with Ink Tense. And then I used um, Faber-Castell Black Edition pencils um to go over everything yeah that's it that's all i used um, and then obviously sparkle pop pen which is hopefully you can see all the shimmer on there um but yeah this was a fun one i did this one on holiday it was just a really quick and easy quick page to do um but lots of sparkle and shine on it um and a lot of fun but it was kind of cute so i did that one and then i also did the camping gnomes so for this one, I based everything with my alcohol markers, then went over the top with my pencils. I cannot remember which pencils it was. It might've been the Artex pencils, perhaps. Not 100% sure. Um, and then some Sparkle Pop pen and some white gel pen. Um, but yeah, I really liked this one. I thought it was kind of cute and lots of fun. Um, but that's all I've done in that one. So two pages done in that. At least I have done a couple. Um, Next up is another uncolored book. In fact, I've got several uncolored books in a row here. So Fright and Seek by Lee Melendres. I saw this one being done um, by a few different people and thought I just had to have this book. And when I got it, I looked at it and was like, oh my God, <laughs> completely overwhelmed by all of the detail in it. Um, I will definitely get around to doing something in here though, because it is a really fun little book. Um, and yeah, there's lots of kind of cool pages in here. Um, but yeah, very, very detailed. Uh, so I'm gonna have to be in the right kind of mood to do this one. But it was kind of a fun one anyway. So it's Fright and Seek by Lee Melendres. 
Next up, I have two books which I got for Christmas. So again, they are untouched, but um, I absolutely love them. So both Christine Caron books. This is very, very and fantasy grayscale coloring book. Um, absolutely gorgeous artwork. Um, really love her artwork and would love, I love this page. Absolutely love this one. Um, would really love to get around to doing something in this book. Um, but yeah, with my hair and skin skills, I kind of feel like I won't be able to do them justice just yet, but I do think they are absolutely gorgeous. So that is Fairy and Fantasy, Grayscale Coloring Book. And then I have the Fairy and Fantasy 2, Grayscale Coloring Book, also by Christine Karen. Um, and just another one that's full of beautiful images, absolutely stunning. Um, and kind of lots of different seasons covered. So if you're a seasonal colorist, it's a great book. Um, but all portraits. Um, and yeah, they are, I love this one. Gorgeous. Um, yeah, really like that. Those both of those books. So I do hope I can get one coloured in there, and try and work on my skin and hair. Next up, I have my R.J. Hampson books. Um, I haven't done anything in two of these. Um, I did. I would really love to do some because I love his artwork. I think it's just. I love this one. Um, just gorgeous. Really, really like it. Um, the paper is is not great like I kind of thought I was holding out to get the hardcover books I kind of thought by doing that I'd be getting much better paper quality I'm not sure what the paper quality was like in his original books but it's not it's not brilliant it's okay um but it's not brilliant but it's doable and just beautiful so that one is Lost and Found by RJ Hampson then of course I have A Frog's Tail Mr. Fogarty coloring book. Um, again, just love the artwork. It's absolutely gorgeous. Definitely want to do some coloring in this one. Uh, I did have one picked out for hoping to get to around this month. I don't know, or around kind of winter time. I don't know if I will get to it. It's this one, which I think is really cute, sitting in the pub, having a pub lunch um, with their pint and their pie. <laughs> But I really like that one. Um, but I do love all the pages in here. And as I say, I hope that I can get to colour at least one or two of them over the coming months. So that is Frog's Tale by RJ Hampson. And the final RJ Hampson book is Moonlight Mischief. I have done one page in here, so I'm kind of redeeming myself slightly, which was the very back page. Um, and I did this. This was a bit of an experiment to see how... Um, the kind of it took water how the paper took water and it did okay it's a little bit buckled and wrinkled as you can see but it's not too bad okay so I used my I think it was Albrecht Dural watercolor pencils um I used some um water-based markers to base everything and then pencil over top a little bit of Posca around the flowers and some gold gel pen I think and some CSY paint um, but yeah, that was it for this one. And that's all I've done in here. Again, another lovely book. Love all the images in these books, but just haven't got around to colouring them. <laughs> Too many books and not enough time. Okay, next up is Botanicum by Maria Trolle. This is the only Maria Trolle book I own. And I have just done one page in here. I did mark that one as a possibility for Christmas, but didn't get to it. Didn't get much coloured in December, really. Got a little bit done, but not a huge amount. Um, I really like the images in here. I don't know why I haven't coloured more. Just <laughs> too many colouring books and not enough time. Same old story. Um, the page I have done is towards the front somewhere. Where is it? Oh, right at the front, which is this one. And I think I used... It's all just pencil. I think I used Sergeant Arts pencil. I used some white kind of gel pen to go around some details. And yeah, that's it. That's all I used. Don't love it, but don't hate this one. Um, I was kind of just trying out the paper and having to play around to see what I could do. Um, but yeah, not too bad. So that is it for my Maria Trolle Botanicum. 
Next up, I have a bunch of Eerie books, which none are coloured in. And um, I keep opening these up and looking at them and then kind of going, oh, I don't know. So this is, maybe I should do them in order. So this is Romantic Country, the first tale. And as I say, I have done nothing in here. Um, I really, really, really want to do something in these books because I really like the artwork. Um, it's beautiful, really, really nice. I can't give you a reason as to why I haven't got to them yet. Um, except again, I've got too many coloring books. <laughs> I need to stop buying them, really do. But that's Romantic Country. Um, then I have Romantic Country, the second tale, again, uncolored. Um, it is stunning, absolutely beautiful. I'm sure you've all seen flip throughs of this, so I won't spend ages going through these ones because they are just beautiful, but just haven't got round to doing them. Um, and hopefully I can remedy that in the coming months. Then I got these two um, very, very recently, literally a couple of days ago, I made an order on Amazon Japan and one is the World Tales book and one is um, World Stories. I can't remember which one is which. Um, one is a really recent release. Um, I think it might be this one. This was like called Pictures Based on Stories. So um, you had obviously The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe back there with this one. I haven't like translated it, which I need to do, um, but I'm just giving a quick kind of flick through today. Um, I don't know what all the stories are, but um, some of them I definitely recognize. Um, this one, these ones are some of my favorites because it's Anne of Green Gables. So we've got Anne with her puff sleeve dress. We've got Anne and Diana here, and I guess that's Marilla and uh, Matthew back there. Um, and this one where she's sitting at the train station waiting for Matthew to pick her up with her bag. I love those pages. So really, really like those ones. Um, I guess this is the little matchstick girl. Not 100% sure about this one. Uh, this is the Jungle Book. Again, not sure about that one or well, that one. Um, I need to do some translating Heidi, I think, which is really lovely. Another one with Heidi um, and Peter and the goats. Not sure about that one. Um, not sure, maybe like Tom Sawyer or Huckleberry Finn or something like that. Um, yeah, some of them I'm really not sure on. <laughs> I know this one, but I can't think of the name of it. I really can't. Um, this one's cute. I like the sheep knitting. I think that's kind of fun. Um, we've got Little Woman. So we've got Joe, Meg, Beth and Amy, which I think is gorgeous. Um, yeah, so I'm just doing a very quick flip through here, obviously. Um, I think there are four flip throughs um, on various channels in here. I'm guessing this is Beauty and the Beast. Um, but it is just a really lovely book um, and I feel quite lucky to have this one, but yeah, I need to get around to colouring it. So that is, I'm not 100% sure what that is, but it's one by Eerie. Um, it's her latest release. And then the final one I have here is another one by Eerie. And I think this is one, the one called The World, World Tales, which is kind of based on um, world kind of fairy stories and legends and that sort of thing, I believe. I could be wrong, like this is, I believe is the Chinese New Year, Chinese horoscope. Um, not sure what that one's about. Um, the giant turnip here, which is kind of a fun one. And uh, the Lion, the Witch, uh, sorry, I'm going to say the Lion, the Witch and Wardrobe, the Wizard of Oz, that one. Um, yeah, some of them I really don't know. Gulliver's Tra Travels, I presume, Three Little Pigs, Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, I think that might be the secret garden, perhaps. Um, but really beautiful, really lovely pictures, lovely illustrations. And I would definitely love to do some coloring in these books. Um, so I just have to pull my finger out and get going, <laughs> actually do something, um, because they are just gorgeous. So I'm going to leave it there. That is uh, part two complete. I will be back with part three. I think part three will probably be the last part. Um, I've got a 
pretty big collection, <laughs> but I'm hoping I can squeeze it into three parts. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you enjoyed this and I hope that you will come back and visit me again for part three. Um, have a lovely week and take care. Bye.